Welcome to this presentation on using PSPP for the chi-square test of independence. The agenda for this lecture is straightforward. We will use PSPP to conduct a chi-square test of independence. We will not perform the test in one shot. However, we will do it in steps. The first step will be to import the data, then follow up by stating the hypothesis test, the rejection rule, and other supporting details. Afterwards, we'll conduct the actual test using PSPP and examine the output. After examining the output, we format it using APA and present it. Also, we'll talk about some takeaways that you should figure out and take away from this presentation. The first step is to import your data just like you've done in previous units. Also, make sure the column headings are actually the variables. It is important to clearly state the hypotheses. In order to do so, you have to know the format of the hypotheses for the chi-square test of independence. They appear like this. The null hypothesis states there is no relationship between two categorical variables. The alternative hypothesis says there is a relationship between two categorical variables. If you wish to use this template, you can. We also have the usual rejection rule. If P is less than alpha, or alpha is 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. If P is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. However, there is one special rule for this test. If we do reject the null, if P is less than alpha, then we have to follow up with a measure of Kramer's V, and I'll show you how to do that in this video. All this statistical talk is just a fancy way of asking, is there a relationship between two variables? If so, how strong is it? The chi-square test of independence will tell you whether there's a relationship. Kramer's V will tell you how strong that relationship is, assuming there is a relationship to measure. For this video, we're going to use the usual data set, and we're going to see if there is a relationship between numcars and lit comfort. If you remember from the survey data, numcars is simply the number of car payments per month reported by a participant. So if someone's paying off two cars, they make two car payments per month. That sort of logic. Lick comfort is a Likert comfort scale of how comfortable the person is with their financial standing. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a chi-square test of independence and see if comfort level is related to the number of car payments per month. Does this make sense to do? And the answer is yes. If you're paying off four cars instead of two cars, you may be a little more antsy, a little more edgy about your financial standing. So there is some you know, logic to believe that there is a relationship occurring here. However, we can't just infer that just off the top of our heads. We have to have statistics to tell us whether it's there or not. Now that we know everything we need to know, let's state the hypotheses for this test. From the previous slide, we realized there are two categorical variables, numcars and lit comfort. When we plug these into the template for the hypotheses, we basically come up with a null and alternative hypothesis. We also have the usual rejection rule. If P is less than alpha, where alpha is equal to 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. If P is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. However, we have one additional modification. If we do reject the null, if P is less than alpha, we have to follow up with a measurement of Kramer's V. Remember, Kramer's V will tell us how strong the relationship is if we reject the null hypothesis. So what are we really asking? Well, what we're asking is this. Is there a relationship between numcars and lit comfort? If so, how strong is that relationship? You have to be careful when conducting this test in PSPP because PSPP does not call the test the chi-square test of independence. Instead, it calls it cross-tabs because a long time ago, everything was called cross-tabulation, which you probably heard about, and all the tests that were somehow related to cross-tabs were lumped together into one tag called cross-tabs. 
Unfortunately, the test we're using is also lumped into that category. So don't be surprised to see that. So anyways, despite a little bit of history, in order to begin the analysis, click on Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and Crosstabs. Once you click on it, a dialog box will appear. After clicking the window, you will get the Crosstabs box. The Crosstabs box is actually PSPP's way of saying chi-squared test. So what you have to do is place numcars and lit comfort into the rows and columns as you see here. After you do that, click the Statistics button and turn on Chi-Square and Phi. Phi is a little deceptive. It's actually Kramer's V. We'll find out a little more about that later. Some older statisticians call Kramer's V by the Greek letter Phi, hence the word Phi. However, once you work through all three steps, click Continue and Continue On. You are now ready to conduct the analysis. Click OK to run the test. PSPP will give you a lot of output for this test. It's a little confusing at first, but it's not so bad once you see the pieces for what they are. The very first piece is N, the total number of cases. The only important piece of information you really need from this first box is N. The second box, or matrix, is actually the contingency table that you've read about in your required reading. The format is a little weird, so I'm going to go over one cell with you so you get the general idea. The computer tells you what to expect right here in each cell. The first number is the count. So for people who reported no car payments but a comfort scale of 1, there was 45 of them. The second number, I'll highlight in green, indicates the percentage of these people of how much they represent in that row. So in this case, the number is telling you that 100% of people with no car payments appeared in this column. If you look, there's no one here, or here, or here. So in this row, all 45 represent 100% of the people who are in this row. The next number is the column percentage. It's the same interpretation, but for a column. If you notice, all 45 people here represent the entire column. Therefore, they represent 100% of the column. And last but not least, and it's an important number to know, is these 45 people represent 30% of the overall total. That's how you read each cell, and that's how you can read the contingency table. Below the contingency table lies a whole bunch of cool information. This is the information you need to figure out the result of your hypothesis test. The first thing you should notice is the value of chi-squared. In PSPP, it's called Pearson's chi-squared. A lot of people still call it Pearson's chi-squared, but you know, other people just call it chi-squared. So no matter, the value of chi-squared for your test is 450. The test contained nine degrees of freedom, as you can see right here, and is very significant because the p-value is far less than alpha. The p-value is zero. So this tells us that we're going to reject the null hypothesis. And since we rejected the null hypothesis, we have to find out Kramer's V, which is located right below. We had to click the phi off in the configuration in order to get phi in Kramer's V. That's why you had to do that extra step. In this case, Kramer's V is equal to one. A value of one is extremely rare. Now on to the APA write-up of our results. The write-up consists of a level 2 header followed by the hypothesis test. As you can see, the null and alternative hypotheses are listed. Afterwards, we list the results of the test. We open up with a statement saying the chi-square statistic and its p-value is calculated using PSPP, assuming alpha equals 0.05. 
that just warms up the audience to what you actually did. And then now we hit them with the results. We state that we performed the chi-square test, and the chi-square test had nine degrees of freedom. It contained 150 cases, and the chi-square value itself, the statistic of chi-square, was 450. The p-value of the test was zero, and had a Kramer's V of one. We also state that Kramer's V indicated a perfectly symmetric relationship, and you can look up values of Kramer's V using a table which I supply in the class. The important thing to notice is how these statistics are formatted in a parenthetical citation. Basically, you see chi-squared, P, and V in that order. It's always presented in this order in APA. So when you format these, follow this strategy and you'll be okay. It is important to realize PSPP can conduct this test for you. It's difficult to manually calculate, but a computer can knock it out in no time flat, and that will make your life much easier. Also remember, PSPP does not call this test by its real name. Instead, it calls it by crosstabs. Also, if you obtain a significant result, you also have to attain Kramer's V and that's hidden under the fee option we checked off earlier. The example we had was significant. It was very significant and very strong. However, the handout in the class will show you how to write up insignificant and significant chi-squared test. It also contains a table of Kramer's V, which you should really review. And last but not least, this isn't tough. Once you do this a couple times, it'll become second nature to you. and You'll be like, hey, cool. I can now organize and analyze categorical data to see if there's a relationship between two categories. Not only is that a good dissertation skill, that's a job skill. And with that, I wish you the best of luck on your test and good luck.